Today I'm presenting the CompuColor 2 microcomputer, a somewhat uh, rare, uh, unpopular micro from uh, 1978. It's based on the 8080 processor, and what really set it apart for the time was that um, it uh, came with color graphics. It was built into the housing of a 13-inch color TV, and uh, let's have a look. In the place of the uh, tuner, there's actually an integrated floppy drive. And uh, it's over here. Let's plug in uh, something and see what it does. Uh, to make this appealing to uh, the, the beginning user, they had a neat feature. There's a, on the keyboard, there's an auto button. When you hit it, it looks for a file called menu.base and uh, executes it. Here's the, uh, the menu from a uh, sampler disk with a bunch of demos. And I'll run a graphics demo. The copy color was able to display um, eight foreground colors and eight background colors. Um, it had 64 characters per line, 32 lines. Um, an interesting uh, character set with lots of graphics characters and double height characters and blinking and things like that. Um, this particular machine has 16K of RAM. They could have as much as 32K of RAM. Interesting story about the copy color is that the uh, Microsoft didn't know that uh, CopyColor was using Microsoft Basic uh, until they were sh shipping, you know, hundreds of units, and uh, Microsoft, you know, gave them a cease and desist, and they, they ended up coming to an agreement that um, CopyColor would begin paying royalties from then on, um, and Microsoft would get uh, to use the improvements that CopyColor had made to Microsoft Basic. The machine is a 4K RAM for holding the, the video display. Here's a disk containing some uh, semi language programs written by a guy named Trevor Taylor in Australia. And uh, these do a little bit better job of showing off some of the graphics that this is uh, capable of. This one's called Sea War. Here we go, the ships. Not that I'm necessarily good at it. The Capicolor did not have sound uh, inherently. It had some uh, aftermarket sound capabilities. That's one game called Sea War. Here you can see it mixes text and graphics pretty well. Um, the graphics were basically 128 by 128 pixels. They were really um, characters that were um, you know, 4 by 2 grid. But you can <clears throat> intermix those with text and get some blocky graphics. Let's try a different game. I'm going to run another Trevor Taylor game. This one is uh, called Laser, yeah, another assembly language program. Another simple game where you try and shoot the aliens. No one's getting close to me though. Here we go. Oop. There we go, shot one. Some of them have shields and so they don't die when you shoot them. 
I like that guy. Not the most exciting game. You get the idea? I've propped up the keyboard so you have a better look at it. <clears throat> um, it came with three possible keyboard models. The basic model, the extended model, or this one, the deluxe model. Um, it's got your usual uh, keyboard keys here, numeric keypad, some special um, editing buttons, you know, reset, insert line, delete line, uh, row of function keys. And over here are special keys that either can enter commands in basic or <clears throat> you can use for, to quickly set the foreground and background color. Um, it had eight foreground and eight background colors that were um, black, blue, red, violet, green, cyan, yellow, and white.